This episode is dedicated to the memory of Don West. Welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling radio podcast! Filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay per view by pay per view. This is your host, your boy with the monster's ball, Jay Hunter. There was a twiddly action there. Joined as ever by the king of the mountain, OC. Baby. And the fish market brawler, V1. <laughs> <laughs> What's the crack? It's the inaugural edition of our new TNA main event mafia story arc, and it's coming up right now. Welcome, Nobbers! Happy days are here again. Hey. Oh, see, good to have you back, sir. How you doing? How you feeling? Grand. Uh, yeah, um, it's not like I went anywhere. Oh, really? Because that's not what I heard from the Maximum Male Models. Go on. Hey, have a look at what Mass say. He had something to say about it. Oh, at OSW Review, please inform Mr. O.O. Say we are reviewing his application. Ooh. Whoa. You're in there. You're in there. So, not to date this video, but it's been a while. It's been a while. Been a little while. How's the uh, old application going now? Like, his, the application was like one of those little American footballs that I just threw. And it knocked off his desk and into the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> so you're being audited. <laughs> uh, they're only the bloody greatest tag team in the world. Get these boys featured prominently. <laughs> We've just passed 190,000 subs on YouTube. Nice, nice. Yeah, so we're officially on the road to 200,000 subs. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, we're officially on the road to a million. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you in 2097. <laughs> uh, did you know, uh, OSW, we're gender specific. Because no women watch our show. Hey. So if you haven't yet, please do, do the thing you know, yeah, and uh, help us get there. Or don't. I'm not your mama. I never pretended that I did. <laughs> Portended. Is that a word? Human. I don't know. I hope I, so. I don't know. What's I think that word is a type of mushroom. Yeah? That's portobello. All right. Yeah. <laughs> if you which versions are we watching? Oh, I see. You watch the... The legitimate and legal YouTube version, 2 hours 55. Uh-huh. V1, you watch the... I signed up to Impact Plus, also legitimate and legal. Ah, lovely. 2 hours 55 is the same length. Uh-huh. And I watch the live version, sourced by Matthew. Thank you, mate. <laughs> well, I assume you went back in time to watch it now, Jay. Big time. Yeah, Big gotcha. Time. Okay. It was a very costly. <laughs> Actually, no, I just broke out my VCDs from India. Yeah! I was waiting to bring them up. Which you literally, they were what, 30 rupees each? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah which was like, like a couple of pence each. Yeah, we, we went to this random shop in the middle of India and they were selling TNA. VCDs. Do you remember VCDs? VCDs. It was, it was like burning yeah. DivX to disc. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, the quality was so bad, but we were like, this is amazing! I go to spend like four euro <laughs> and come home with like 40 paper The views. entire TNA library. <laughs> library for a couple of quid. TNA might not have gotten the money, but money was spent on... <laughs> <laughs> Historic first ever King of the Mountain. All the versions are two hours fifty-five, but the on-demand ver nil demand uh, versions have these little two-second fade to black spots. Yeah, I'm guessing that they're edited in for ads on 
YouTube. Very good, that's exactly right. But they don't actually pause the action. They just literally fade in and out of the black for two seconds. You don't miss anything. Tell you what, that's how you started off right there. The only difference with the live version, of course, not having those fade to blacks, obviously much worse quality since it was recorded off a TV in uh, 2008. And they don't bleep Samoa Joe's entrance. If you notice, like he's just walking down the ring and shouts, the toughest motherfucker on planet Earth. <laughs> yeah. This was one we watched here, by the way. Mm. Now you're wondering which version are we using? Uh, so you want the best looking video for the OSW. Okay, live VHS, 384p. Region 2 DVDs are at 540p, still not HD. Total Access TNA, that's the On Demand in 2017. Great bit rate, but only 720p. Impact Plus, the current On Demand service, is 1080p, but has significant artifacting blocking. It's not a great rip. October 2022, Impact actually uploaded the whole thing to YouTube, fixed the aspect ratio 1080p, but YouTube really crush and compress. So you can either have 720p great bit rate or 1080p worse bit rate. Which should we choose? Secret option six, start with the 720p version great bit rate and get our bra Nick Acosta to AI upscale it to 1080p since there's more information to deal with. And while you're at it, whack it up to 60 frames a second. You could sell that back to Impact now. <laughs> Honestly, you fucking could. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure there's no budget for it. <laughs> Pretty sure. And now, TNA Wrestling proudly presents its biggest pay-per-view event of the year, Bound for Glory. It's TNA Bound for oh, fucking TNA! Yeah. <laughs> it's DNA Bound for Glory 4, 12th of October 2008, from the Sears Center. Now, the Now Arena in Chicago. Now is from that great Henry VIII speech. Unforgettable. Now! <laughs> That's all I can remember. <laughs> in Chicago, Illinois. In Illinois. In Illinois. Technically not Chicago, but the Hoffman Estates, half an hour away. With 5,000 attendants, 4,500 paid. With 35,000 buys, the eighth highest in company history. The top being Joe vs. Angle 1, Genesis 2006. Genesis, okay. Uh, that was 60,000. It makes me really sad. TNA was really good TV at the mm. time with a rocking roster. Really loud, diehard fans. And they could only... Yeah muster up 60,000 buys for their highest ever show. Yep. Of course, the NOW arena is where... Oh, <laughs> it's where AW do All Out every year since 2019. Oh, yeah. Commentators tonight are the inimitable duo of Don West and Iron Mike Tanay. You just fell for a bluff. I see that method checking now. You ain't no big pop up pump. I'm always masking out in public, so I'm generating revenue. The only source I'm trusting all those boys from OSW. I just hit you with the moves I know. Rematch them and they be like, no. No, I came for the smoke, but these guys are a joke. They all mid like they bread smoke. Our inaugural contest is a 10-man steel asylum match for the number one contenders for the X Division title in a red steel asylum. Just like, oh, instant Nam flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> January 4, 2010. Oh, homicide. homicide? Yeah. I was like, oh, no. Oh, my Didn't, God. Didn't uh, Jeff win that one? Uh, no, he came out afterwards to try. Ah, and he Everyone sat on forget. the top of the yeah, cage. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know, a cage match, you go up the sides, over the top, and both feet hit the floor. In a steel asylum, you not only scale the sides, you also have to kind of jamboree climb up the concave roof and exit out through the anus in the center. <laughs> <laughs> the anus. <laughs> Beatles generic music plays. It's like la la la. No one's getting their entrances. Oh my la, god! La, 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 Fucking la. WrestleMania 25 women battle royale. <laughs> like, where is Kid Rock? Lads? <laughs> lads, there's ten wrestlers. Come on, we'd be here all night. Ah, oh, come the, on. Well, in World War Three, they did the same thing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, that yes. was sixty, <laughs> not ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like they just finalized this match five minutes ago. How do I know? EY was just in a dark match, tagging with Sojo Bow. Sojo, I know your mama. 
I never said that I was. <laughs> <laughs> Beating Lance Hoyt and Christy Hemi. So who have we got in this match? Hold on, let, let me, let me, because I didn't write it down. So let me see oh, if I nice. remember okay. them all. Okay. okay, here we go, here we go. Okay. So the easy one, the... I uh, think I know the one that you're going to okay. forget. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> me, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. It. All right. Well, I'm going to yeah. 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 start with the two that I might forget. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So we got Jimmy Rave. Yeah. And Johnny DeFore. Damn it! Johnny DeFore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's two down. Then we got the easy ones: the Prince Joseph Brotherhood, EY, Curry Man, and Shark Boy. So I got five. Now got five more. It's very easy, actually. Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, a uh, little Petey Pump. Two more. Oh, the guns! There you oh, go. Look at this. Yeah. Um, Sanjay turns his back to the camera before he gets oh, in. Oh my fucking god! And like this is now a 1080 AI upscaled sparkling HD backney. Oh my god. I Mount know. Doom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I know he's not particularly massive in ter- like he doesn't have the beef, but in our first show of this arc, we already have a front runner for Roy de Magoo. He's insane looking as well. Like he's so ripped. He's Holy ripped. Holy shit, man. Yeah. And don't take our opinion. Let's ask Dr. Nash. <laughs> <laughs> god, you're on the juice. You're on the juice. <laughs> But I know you're dirty. I know you're on steroids. What? Why? You're, you're on no, edible. No, 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 you're a gas head. No, 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 no. You're a gas head. No, 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 no. What's this look what? like? What? What's this look like? Testosterone? No, What's no, this no, look no, like, no. huh? No, no, no. The juice? It's an ambush. What's this, huh? This huh? is an ambush. Berry bonds? Ah, what? What? I can't take it. What? I gotta go. Ding, ding, ding. Instant crash course in what the X Division is. A crazy cavalcade of high spots. Insane round the world three times head scissors by Sanjay... Lads, run a train on Shark Boy in the corner. Pow, 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 pow. Set up Brother Divine. Misses. Motor City Machine Guns. Double arm ringer. Double elbow. Double team suplex. No. Reverse into a triple team suplex. No. Reverse into a quadruple suplex. Four on three. Oh, yes. look at this. They went for a triple suplex. Oh, there it is. Motor City Machine Guns with a double team high low kicks to sandwich lads in the corner. Curry man. Cradle Sanjay into Brett's rope, jumping back breaker, or a Tokyo Dangerous backbreaker. <laughs> what a great name. Divine looks for a super power bomb. No, Super Rana. Shelly, five star frog splash. And Rikishi bumps. Chicago erupt into the first TNA chant of the night. And a punch to the face of the guru as the crowd chants their, their excitement. Chicago, Illinois, rocket and bound for glory. How could you not? Mm. This is 10 super workers going out there. Nine, nine super workers. Eight, eight, eight. eight. <laughs> no, give, the, give them credit. <laughs> I know you don't want to. But man, they are going out there and saying, I don't care if we're in the opening match. I don't care if this match got zero build, which it didn't. We're going to go out there and say, everyone else, best of luck following us. Because they fucking worked, man. Mm. Super Eric, daft gimmick, still a beast of a man, hits a double FU, an FU to two people. Foo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. MMG tilt the world backbreaker and throw Super Eric onto lethal as Saban hits a cutter. Spooge. Little Petey causes a rare MMG misstrike, denies a sliced bread and capitalizes with a Canadian destroyer. And he hits the Canadian destroyer. Alex Shelley is absolutely pummeled. Give me yeah, a sure. shell, yeah. Double jumping stone cold stunner. Uh, the chummer. Ah, <laughs> the old deep sea dive. Yeah. Chummer's great. He, it is. It's it, a great it, name. D- like I, he covered it quite well, but either he was like, there's no way I'm landing on my arse. <laughs> so he kind of one foot uh, and then on his arse. So it was a nice safe one for him anyway. Divine. Oof. Bollocks. Did you break Jimmy Rave's neck with your oh. divine intervention? I I don't know how he didn't, but nobody looked concerned, rave, roll away, like it was, oh, that's fine. But my God, I don't know how he didn't kill him. Mm. Uh, he did just hurt it, but recovered quick enough. He was wrestling again at the next pay-per-view. Curry man with a spice rack. <laughs> Gorilla press throw into the turnbuckle. And then he's like, oh, should I do this after? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do it though. He, no, then he's just, oh, fuck it. I'll go, I'll go up. Finish of the match. Can the Masala Man escape? 
denied. Do it quicker than a whippet with a bum full of dynamite. <laughs> Big bump. Machismo catches up to Sanjay and the two throw Dukes upside down. Watching the lads scale the dome, I'm like, oh, dang, you need some great core strength to be up there and to actually exit. Lethal nears the hole and gets his leg over <laughs> and wins the Asylum match in a tidy 12 minutes. Look at that! He's got it! Here's your winner! Yeah. Machismo! Great. Great fun. You throw all 10 of these lads in there. They're going to have a lot of fun. There's going to be amazing high spots, amazing double team moves. Loved every second of it. A highlight for me was like Divine had his kind of 90 seconds. And other than that botched move, he looked amazing. But what I would say is if I was in this match, if the booker approached me, right, you're going over. Say, no, I am not trying. I will make a fool of myself trying to get out of this cage. I am not going past the vertical part no. of this cage, no. mate. Sorry. It takes brass balls to try and get out of that cage. I just, I'm just thinking of the botchamania bit where they splice homicide trying to get out yeah. and someone like splice the, the drill sergeant shouting <laughs> abuse. That <laughs> <last pile. laughs> yeah, I had no chance. Get up here, fat boy! Quickly, move it out, move it out, pile, move it out! You climb obstacles like old people, fuck! You know that private pile? Get up here, you're too slow! Move it, move it! Private pile, whatever you do, don't fall down! That would break my fucking heart! Quickly, up and over, up and over! Well, what in the fuck are you waiting for, private pile? Get up and over! Move it, move it, move it! Are you quitting on me? Well, are you? Then quit, you slimy fucking walrus fucking piece of shit! One weird thing. Of all the things for WWE to copy off of TNA, I never thought a red cell would be the thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but WWE changed Hell in a Cell to an ugly red one, and... It looks horrendous, it's yeah. shit looking on TV. Like, of all the things to copy, this... Mm. Yeah, a great primer for TNA. Opening a pay-per-view up with an X Division spot fest is a staple of the company. Like next month opens with a 10-man elimination match. Victory Road had a 12-man tag. Gets you hyped and excited. Showcase a bunch of different talents all looking to get themselves and each other over. Work the trees, tidy, best use of like Shark Boy, Jimmy Rave, Brother D Boy. <laughs> hyped. <laughs> Prime TNA. Back in our wheelhouse, lads. Mm. Oh. <laughs> That's the way you kick off a TNA pay-per-view. Both commentators actually exhale. They're like, Ooh. literally take a breath. Don West and Mike Tanay run down the card. Chicago's own Don West, RIP. He passed away just before the new year at 59. Made his name as a top TV salesman all the way back in 1991. And he was really, really good at it. His run with the Shop at Home Network was so successful, Will Ferrell parodied him on SNL. Wow. You mean you can take the shack yeah. cards off the shack yeah. flack if you want to? Yeah, you, you get out of here, Get out of here, You get out! He caught the attention of Vince Russo, unfortunately, <laughs> who offered him a job in WCW in 2000. But he didn't take it, good man. Uh, he did, however, introduce him to Jeff Jarrett and became the lead announcer on TNA's first pay-per-view, and stayed for over a decade. Uh, lots of happy memories hearing him do his best to drive TNA with all of his passion. I, I loved his shtick. My, I just loved how you believed he was an actual wrestling fan that loved TNA and the wrestlers and actually like Excalibur is today. You know, he, you, you know, he knows his shit. Like Don West was so professional, it came across like he knew his shit, even yeah. though I'm sure he had no it's idea crazy. what was going on. He knew on. nothing about wrestling no. when he joined. No. My favourite, just in general, his spots, and he broke it out this show when Homicide would do his Tope Con Hilo, mm-hmm. and they get the high five off Don West. Yeah, fantastic. That yeah. Was my, that was my favourite. It's actually the same thing that I've gotten there. Don's high fives were brilliant. It's like, it took him a long time to get really good because he wasn't great for like years, but it didn't matter because he gave it so much socks and he cared so much that that absolutely carried him through and then by the time where he did get good 
he's fucking great. And then they stopped using him then for like a while. And I was like, oh, like he just got really good. Except for the weird time that they turned him heel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, what was that? Commentators yeah. always turn heel. Yeah, yeah. They always turn heel. Get him yeah. a coal mine, for God's yeah. sake. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my favorite call of Don West was during an abyss bloody brawl where, uh, you know, all mayhem going around and it just kind of cuts to some woman in the crowd while he's talking. And he was like, look at the whore. <laughs> <laughs> And the commentators freeze for a few seconds. <laughs> How could you not piss yourself <laughs> laughing when that shit happens? It's going to be a great night for me. My crowning achievement is TNA management because Bound for Glory 4 is going to be the biggest event of all time. And I'm responsible for a lot of it. We are hurtled to Jim Cornette's office with our boy, JB. Jim Cornette is the on-screen head of TNA management slash general office slash booker. He had little actual booking power in TNA, but he did create some of their best stuff, like the Motor City Machine Guns versus Beer Money feud. That's him. But when Russo was promoted to head of creative July 2009, he bounced two months later in September. Uh, it was rumoured he blew up backstage when it was floated that EY was winning the belt. And like, what a world champion EY. What the world EY world champion? So. Like, I, I love Eric Young, but like... He's been showcases. It, it was the wrong choice. Opening card, mid-card guy with no future. If you, it's like Santino, kind of. If you do it as the payoff of like a nine-month run where he turns heel and he earns it, sure, why not? But they, they just went like, a, world elite! Champion! I was like, oh, fuck off. I don't believe this. Get that cap on you. <laughs> Get those knee pads off. <laughs> <laughs> on Spike TV, TNA Impact is going to HD. High Sweet. definition. Uh, Horny Corny drops that TNA will be going to HD on the 23rd. So that's the next big show. New commish, Mick Foley, says hello. He just debuted on telly September 18th, just under a month ago. He ditched being SmackDown commentator a month prior. Didn't like Vince barking at him on headset. Which he actually talks about in his first promo. I'm out the next time he drops the F-bomb. Mm. Vince told him to gut it out, and Mick retorted, What happens from here? If I work hard at this for 10 years, and I get as good as I can possibly be, that you'll treat me the way you treat J.R.? Do you think we treated JR bad? I think you've made his life a lot more difficult than it needed to be. Yeah, JR is treated pretty bad. So he just said, like, that's the height of it. That's as good as it's going to get for me in WWE. So at least if I go to TNA, maybe I can make a difference. Why did Michael Cole, or has Michael Cole gotten special treatment? He's never been made a fool of. Like, I understand he did his coal miner thing, but that wasn't embarrassing to the extent that Jim Ross is what he was put through. Maybe it's because it's because people respect JR. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, let's, let's take him down yeah, exactly, and watch her too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I also think Cole is like the perfect Vince soldier. Does what he's told, never complains, gives Vince exactly what Vince wants yeah. to hear. Yeah. Mm. Good old JR, Jim Ross, the man with the second biggest ego in sports entertainment. Oh, okay. It's gold. Yes, sir. It's gold. So you want. Okay, I've got it, sir. I just didn't know if you want me to hit it every time, but I'll do that from now on. Okay, you got it. Thank you. Yep, I will. Thank you for coming. Well, I appreciate it. I remember when you used to let me ride with the Midnight Express and oh. JB. At night, I'd put a glass up against the wall and listen in on Sweet Stan because Stan no, always no, no, had no, a... Snake, snake, snake. No, don't okay. go. Yeah, right. Foley reminisces with Cornette, glass against the wall, listening to Sweet Stan Lane. He's a notorious poon hound. <laughs> Exit stage right. Enter the beautiful people already making demands. Angelina says she only wants blue M&Ms. Referencing the urban legend of Van Halen, demanding they want a bowl of M&Ms with no brown ones. Like, it turns out that wasn't a legit demand, but rather to see if the concert promoter actually read their contract. Uh. Okay. Yeah, so if okay. they saw no brown ones, okay, the rest of it's fine. And they don't have to do a search on everything you, they didn't do. Other musician demands, like Kanye needs a barber's chair. Mariah Carey... Does he need a barber or just a chair? <laughs> just a <the> chair. <laughs> and the banter that comes with the chair. <laughs> Mariah Carey needs two vases of white roses. Jesus Christ. Eminem needs a CD player because he brings burned CDs with him. Okay, okay that's okay, awesome. Okay, yeah. I like that. Oh, on Semi Pro, amongst his demands, Will Ferrell demanded a three wheeled electric scooter <laughs> and a Guinness beer. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, Guinness is a stout. So uh, I don't know yeah, what he's no, on about. But, uh, you know. It all falls under the umbrella of yeah. booze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Spinal Tap? They like should have come in and be like, it's the wrong bread. You can make a sandwich with this. A bloody breaks, Donna. <laughs> you, you can fold the ham. <laughs> See? Um, oh, uh, the finish up, mix wearing chamois, which is a type of porous leather. Chamois? You'd rather be in velvet. Hey! Oh, and then... I, I, I replayed this a few times because I, I wanted to see both of their reactions. They were both hilarious. The chemistry between these two lads is fantastic. You know what? I take back what I said earlier about the guns being my favourite TNA act. <laughs> it might actually be yeah. Jeremy Borash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. Just but you could, you could tell how much he was having fun with Mick in these segments. I mean, lovely guy and everyone wants to be around him. I'm sure he made people's lives easier just with his general demeanour. Mm, he absolutely. sounds yeah. like an awesome guy. Yeah. Mm. The Golden Goose. Shammy, huh? Damn. Yeah. Shammy. <laughs> I'd rather be in velvet. <laughs> <laughs> Match number two, a knockouts bimbo brawl. <laughs> a six-person intergender tag, beautiful people, Angelina Love and Velvet Sky, and Cube Kip versus Rock Khan, Rhino and ODB. Lol, this TNA approved match is calling Billy Gunn and Rhino bimbo. <laughs> <laughs> like Rhino. Like. I mean, like Billy Gunn, it kind of works for yeah. her, but yeah. like Rhino. Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> like super cereal. <laughs> like, uh, like a handbag with a chihuahua in it. <laughs> <laughs> Splicey. Uh, special referee Tracy Brooks. She was Robert Root's manager until getting the boot in January, replaced by four matches in TNA. No. Peyton Banks. Peyton Banks. Peyton Banks. I remember. The, I, yes. I can't picture the face, but I remember the name. Yes, definitely. Mm. Uh, lockdown 2008. That was her last match. Tracy turned face and transitioned to non-wrestling roles. Officially head of the Knockouts division two months ago in August. Uh, she's half out the door of TNA, though. She disappeared and blow in and out. <laughs> in July next year, she was asked, uh, "Where re- have you been?" And she says, oh, "I've taken time off to work on some projects in Hollywood." <laughs> <laughs> he and Mark Henry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the beautiful people. The beautiful people. Oh wow! Okay, I didn't even think of that. Angelina Love and Velvet Sky, an awesome heel tag duo. Mean it girls, arrogant, blonde, vacuous narcissists pledging to cleanse the TNA roster one ugly person at a time. Of course, in 2010, Russo booked them as baby faces. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. But they do have the greatest entrance spot of all time. Oh, yeah. Is this with the perf cam? Uh, I, I, I don't know how long that lasted, where there was a hand that came out the right brother. <laughs> the assault cam. It was, it was, it was great. It was I loved the perf Different cam. times, different times. Now, with or without the Q-Kid presenting? Ooh, the, the camera wasn't on him, so I think it was fine. No, no, he was... Oh, yeah? Yeah, they, we got it. Like, oh, yeah? We, didn't get, <laughs> we got the opposite angle, but it's quite athletic, actually. He lies on the second rope. Spread eagle. S- for some reason, he puts his legs over his head. It's hilarious. I don't know why he does it. From the Isle of Man... Steve, it's your woman, it's your girl, Rocka Khan. Rocka Khan. Rocka Khan. Rocka Khan. Rocka Rocka Khan. Rocka Rocka Khan. It's no secret to you guys. Uh, I had a crush on Rocka Khan back in the day, back in 2008. And, uh, when I, yeah, I was, I was correct. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you might know her from 2005's WWE Diva Search. I wouldn't. Yeah. No. No one might know her from WWE Diva Search. <laughs> ODB. Great fun. Hold on, quick, just random. Sorry, right, I'm back on Rocky Khan. Yeah. Random no? question. Yeah, yeah. Run, I'm not letting go of Rocky Khan this quickly. <laughs> not okay? that easy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she has to beat him with her bag. <laughs> so when they claim that she's from the Isle of Man, I'm guessing it's because she's like an Amazon. Yeah. The Isle of Men. And they don't actually know that there is an island off of the UK called the Isle of Man with the cats with no tails and the weird yeah. leg flag. She don't ne- think she's from there. Yeah. You know, All right, mate. I thought she was. <laughs> you little bloody. Oh, yeah. I, was like, I didn't know she was a Manx. <laughs> <laughs> Rhino with an I, legally distinct, sir, personally greets Curtis Granderson of the Detroit Tigers, a baseball playing man. 
I uh, didn't recognise him out of his costume. The Grandy Man celebrated 16 seasons in the MLB. Retired January 2020. Oh, clever. Dude in the crowd. You see, he brought a sign which is actually a whiteboard. That's so clever. He doesn't have to bring 10 signs. He can just, yeah. I would imagine there'd be like, if you were going to WWE and try that, there would be zero chance because they know you could literally write anything, you know. E-N-U-S. <laughs> Smelly Fanny. <laughs> You know, you can write whatever you want. <laughs> the face on you is so serious. Like, I really want to say this. <laughs> this is my line in the sand. <laughs> A bimbo brawl. What are the rules? It's an intergender tag. Men can wrestle women. Ah, so, all right. So, cute kip. Billy gun. Gigantic. Horse of a man. Six foot two. Eighteen and a half stone. He's big even against other men. So if you want to win an intergender match, just tag him in. <laughs> <laughs> but we get told how it'll be with men versus women. Rhino versus Velvel. He easily whips her into the turnbuckle and hip toss and Velvel sells like she almost broke her back. She's so bad. I know there was a point where I felt like she got better. But I really? don't I, <laughs> I don't know if that time hasn't come yet. Yeah. 2009, she's on the way down, I think. Okay, so it's already happened that she improved and she's beginning to get worse again. Oh, we get our wish. Kip enters the ring versus Raka Khan. Straight to the choke. (laughs) (laughs) I have nothing else. (laughs) Oh, he's got the nails. She looks great, though. Like, she's nearly as tall and she's got significant beefage as well. Yeah, she looks great. Mm. Can't do a fucking thing, though. (laughs) Counters with a choke to the crotch. (laughs) Okay, so comedy it is, and that's how you'll contend with Kip. ODB escapes a headlock with a back body drops and psychs herself up by smacking her arse. Is that enough time? It is! (laughs) (laughs) Ladies schmals to the outside. Kip sets up for a famouser, but Rhino hits a gore! 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 And the baby faces win it in 6 minutes 15. Gonna go famous or right here. Oh, instead, it's the gore, 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 and that is the one, two, three. Here are your winners, Rocket Con, ODB, and the War Machine, Rhino. I actually liked it. You know, I I went in thinking this was going to be, you know, like a party match, you know, like a fun comedy match. And it's what I got. I enjoyed it. Did not watch this for the wrestling. I didn't expect it to be good. In the build, the beautiful people were going around and they were battering baby faces and they'd put paper bags over their head and yeah. and on the paper bags, they'd have the pictures of themselves on it. Mm. I thought it was great. Good mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better job than when Cody Rhodes did it. He did. Yeah. That was when he was dashing Cody yeah, Rhodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. He had the little yeah. schmig leg. <laughs> the schmig yeah. leg. And they, that was a great gimmick. And then he had the uh, the Phantom of the Opera thing. That was on. also great. Great. Yeah. 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 Solid. Yeah, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, by far the worst match of the night. It was obviously just a bit of comedy. Nice to see Rhino get a victory. He's he's not maybe as much of a jobber to the stars as, say, Kane or the Big Show, but, like, he's a jobber to the stars usually. Mm. It's rare to see him actually pick up a win. So, you know, that was nice for him. Yeah, forgettable comedy match. Main takeaway, Rocka Khan did nothing. She escaped having to wrestle. <laughs> Lasted a year and a half in TNA. Wow, that long. Mostly as Awesome Kong's heavy. Uh, what was the name of her group? The three of them? Kongtourage. Yeah. She had a total of 16 matches in TNA. Guess how many were singles? One. Zero. Big duck art. <laughs> <laughs> Big duck egg. Raka Khan certainly coming into play. Going to bring Velvet out towards the middle of the ring here. Got her in trouble. What's Raka Khan going to do to Velvet Sky? There's that leg right across the throat. One, Powers her down. two, Cover. and three count. And now it's me and the Sheik. The way you talk about this country disgusts me. So you know the saying, if you don't love it, leave it. Austin Creed, savior ones. Consequences Creed here. He hot dogs about his tatty American waistcoat. Because it's Creed versus Bashir, the US versus terrorist. How do you know he's a terrorist? Splice the intro of his theme song. <laughs> it's now a three way. Ladies and gentlemen, no surrender continues. 
continues. They spliced a plane crash. <laughs> the yeah. airplane sounds. You yeah, remember that? Yeah. How did they do? Like, come on. And like, nine eleven was still very fresh in the memory back in two thousand and eight. Yeah. Mm. Did they edit it out on the Impact Plus? He had it last month. He's just dropped it. Ah. The X Division title, Consequences Creed versus Sheikh Abdul Bashir, the champion. Bashir, pretty new to TNA, foot in the door during the X Cup in June, a tournament featuring international unsigned talent, and sometimes some of them stay, and officially joined the following month. His anti-American shouty foreign Arab gimmick, that is from Iran, is a continuation of his manager shtick from WWE with Mohammed Hassan. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I remember just being around 2005 and just doing that all the time. <laughs> just annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed Hassan is amazing, by the way. Way better than Sheikh Bashir. Bashir won the XD title last month at No Surrender, scavenging the win from PD and pinning Creed himself. What is the X Division? It's not about weight limits. It's about no limits. It's their mid-card belt, but it's propped up by mostly cruiserweights. Honestly, I think this doesn't even feel mid-card to me. This feels like low-card. Mm. Well, that's because of the wrestlers in this match. I yeah. mean, at this stage, Xavier Woods was brand new. He was green as grass. Yes, he is great, but as you say, green. And he's 22 years of age. So wow. give the man a chance. I mean, as he hasn't been around that oh, he's been around a year at this a year. stage holy yeah. shit I think he debuted at Bound for Glory yeah with Pac-Man yeah and Martin Bashir like this guy <laughs> <laughs> he's cornering Michael Jackson <laughs> as we speak like this guy was never good like he, never like I, I thought he was an okay wrestler like I fine. thought he was okay and I thought he was an okay promo he's perfectly fine but that's not good enough to be featured no he's a jobber he should be a jobber and I as you know I detest the trope of I'm in the X division I'm the champion but I don't do X division stuff you know I, I, yeah. I, I know he doesn't really play on that but I get that off him but for the first and last time, oh wow, we have an OOC mid-match questionarium. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have to determine what I was referring to when I was writing this sentence. Okay, I was watching the match, taking my notes, and I wrote, over his entire career, what I remember Bashir for is, and then I stopped, and I was like, he did it. He fucking did it. I know it. I yeah, know it. I also know it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually have it written here. Something we've been talking about for years. And we found the match <laughs> where it happened. Match. We found it. This was try. This was clown. <laughs> <laughs> we found... <laughs> Can I answer your question in the form of a noise? Yes, please. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I flipped out seeing that. Yes. Uh, okay, so it's the big is a trope where a wrestler in TNA would jump from the outside top turnbuckle onto the inside and his opponent will meet him halfway <laughs> <laughs> to take the bump and so he just blah, 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 <laughs> jumps <laughs> and they clash and they both splat to the mat together. So it's remarkable how ridiculous it looks. Yeah. He got like six feet in the yeah. air. It was amazing. It's like a joke, it's like a rib. This guy, oh, mwah. He got rocked. Here comes Creed. Cross body cover him. Here we go. No. Creed is great. His like opening move when he jumped through the bottom and the middle rope, landed on his head, flipped over and hit a clothesline. Awesome. Slow it down. Slow it way down. And Sheik takes control. Makes sense. Bashir, the heel, wrestles like one. Crowds hate rest holds, so him applying as many boring rest holds as possible makes the crowd angry. So, the fans rally behind Creed. And Creed, he's an explosive striker who wants to wrestle. Bashir wants to stop and hold. Great heel and face wrestling dynamic. Psychology here. But the reality of the situation is we get a hug of the belly, a leg scissors, sleeper on the mat, sleeper standing up. Sleeper on the mat again. And then the finish. <laughs> Creed, who's doing a lot of athletic offense, does a power spot. A wonderful delayed press slam into a gut buster. Then big punch, big kick, 
nip up. Took too long for an elbow drop. We got a super hurricane run up by Bashir, nose pole reversal, O'Connor roll, and cheat, hold the ropes, and wins. Bashir retains in 9.18. So, oh, wait a minute, roll him up. Look at this, he's using the rope. He got the pin and he used the rope to do it. He just stole this Ladies match. And gentlemen. I thought it was fine. Didn't think it was amazing, but I did enjoy Consequences Creed. Brought a lot of energy. I still feel like this is his debut yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. We've he's, covered he's, his two <laughs> biggest yeah. internet matches. Yeah. Um, anything on this? I thought this match was fine. I thought it was a solid grand match, which is both a positive and it's a negative considering this is an X Division title match. I expect more. Creed is great. Thought he had fire at the end. But yeah, I want more in my title matches. Yeah, Creed is a great athlete and he had a power move as well, so it was cool to see him. By the way, Davari, he's from Minneapolis. Oh, his big American accent. Yeah, and he lives in Detroit. <laughs> it's the heartland of America. Like. <laughs> can I, sorry, can I make one point? Bashir should not have won this match. This is stupid. If you're going to put Creed in this match with the America jingoism, he needs to win it. Because I, does he even get a rematch? Because Jay Lethal's up next. So No. Oh, Steve, you wait until you see what happens to Creed uh, on oh, okay. Impact on Thursday. Okay. Ooh, hey, yeah, that's a that's a inviting thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs>
and Roxy Levyux. Her Roxy, I mean, why you'd want to leave VKM, I don't know. But, you know. <laughs> Kip's Good. gone. He's yeah. bolted. He's lost. He's <laughs> Steve, from the stable. They were in her house. Oh yeah, that was the issue. <laughs> that, was the issue. <laughs> that was her gap. <laughs> yeah, and that's why she had to shave her head <laughs> so that they couldn't notice her. <laughs> She's she, in the witness protection <laughs> program. Yeah. In the same job. She shouldn't have worn that cap that said witness <laughs> protection. <laughs> she brings the hardcore aspect to the TNA knockout division. So per Roxy, I mean. What, what's going on, right? What do they do? Hardcore gimmick. Oh, look. All right, Roxy. Uh, are you want to take a bowl of ball shot to the muff? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, what's what's my attire? It's like, you know those kitchen curtains? Yeah, just cut that off. <laughs> <laughs> so Kong, the unstoppable beast, who's a heel, says she takes on all comers in the form of women from the crowd. Very heelish to get amateurs and just maul them. Get them to sign waivers before, of course. Really cool, actually, June 5th. There's three women who want some, and the last one is Daffers. Nice. Yeah. Which JV name checks, hey, I know you from WCW. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize you. I worked with you in WCW. You're Daphne, right? How are you doing, JV? Good to see you again. Long time no see. What have you been up to? I've been wrestling. I've been wrestling all over the world. I'm so nice. Which is where Taylor Wilde comes in. Initially, Chantelle Taylor. Yeah, she was one of the women from the crowd who were chosen and the impact before Victory Road. She caused a massive upset win, hitting a missile dropkick and schoolgirling Kong, scoring the KO's women's belt and $25,000 kayfabe dollars. I <laughs> 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 can quit working in the glasses, please. <laughs> and uh, Roxy is also there, who is a punk rock chick who shaved her head that isn't Serena D. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. You'd be worried as a triple threat how long until one gets hoofed out so it's one on one. 40 seconds, but this is women in TNA. Kong gets right back in after the first spot. Roxy hits a smooth neck breaker, Samoa Joe backsplash, and follows up with a top rope kneeling press. Chucks out Taylor. The baby faces aren't teaming up. Roxy sells being scared of Kong, knocking into her and getting clubbed for her troubles. Roxy twists Taylor like a pretzel. Can't have Wilde giving up. So awesome. <laughs> and the DNA crowd go mental. From awesome Kong. And now with the bodies laid out in the six-sided ring. I think. Implant Buster. Taylor. Oh, right. Uh, Implant Buster named after that because she did it to ODB, who actually ruptured one of her implants. That'd be it. But Taylor breaks it up with a cheeky top to hole. You see, she. <laughs> <laughs> Free kicked her. Yeah. You hear that clothesline? I'm sure you heard it at home. Wow, what a shot. Finish of the match with both baby faces down. Kong decides to go to the ropes. Awesome Kong goes to the yeah, ropes. Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen here. And obviously is knocked to the outside, allowing Taylor to deliver a beautiful suplex to Roxy and one, two, three in a swelt of five minutes. And Roxy comes at her. Taylor the go behind. Bridging one, suplex. Two. <laughs> you got it. Here's your winner of still. I love that to finish that Roxy goes to hit the voodoo drop, which is like the rock bum bum. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. Taylor does like, you know the way normally when you get out of a move, you've got some kind of twisting motion or something. Yeah. She just pops her in the face twice and then she hits her German suplex. Yeah. Lovely German suplex, by the way. Can anyone give me a kayfabe? Or, and this is including our wonderful fans. A kayfabe reason why taking Roxy's rock bum bum would in any way hurt you more than her. I can't see it. It's got to be the neck, right? Is it? But, like she falls down, but she takes the entire brunt of it because she's below you. Yeah. Your legs are packaged above. Do you packaged. Know? Packaged. packaged. Yeah, it's, open. it's weird. I love to see it. I thought this was quite good fun. I quite liked it. Five minutes was about right. It shouldn't have gone longer than that. Taylor Wilde, awesome theme. And, uh. Oh, it's a cool. it's a cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I had a lot of time for Taylor back in the day. She was about 10 years too early. 2016, maybe. A bit, bit early. 
think she came at that like really awkward yeah. time. She's like very much in no man's land when it comes to making a great living as a female wrestler. Yeah. I think she'd be great in like 93 for that like four months where Vince <laughs> gave a shit about women's wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you know? The Alundra Blaze spot. Yeah, she yeah, 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 yeah. She could be in there. Yeah. She could. Uh, she was good. Yeah. yeah, she was. Taylor Wilde, man. Look good. Babyface fire. Yeah. Solid worker. Decent wrestler. I liked this match. I thought this match was good. Unlike you, I wish it had a few extra minutes. Talk Kong is great. Ah, Kong has got to be the best big woman wrestler ever. Like, Nia Jax is fucking garbage. Uh, uh, rock a con. Oh, right. Oh, rock a con, rock a con, rock a con. Baby, rock a con, rock a con, rock a con. But yeah, she was so good, and she had yeah, a real yeah. rough, rough run when oh, WWE yeah. signed her. Like some, some awful things happened. And, yeah, just like and it ended really yeah. badly. Yeah. She was great, man. Her and Gail Kim. Oh my god! Yeah. All this talk about you know WWE Evolution Revolution, the four horsewomen. Gail Kim, Awesome Kong, and then a few years later, Mickey James are the ones who brought women's wrestling to the wrestling masses and paid it. But at the time, those series of matches with Gail Kim and Kong, it was like TNA, it's, oh my God, women's, you like women's wrestling? You want to go to TNA? It's like, they didn't do much after that. I mean, yeah, yeah we, that was we, it. Yeah. We liked it was Taylor them and, and it was Vel Vel Holland. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the opposite ends. It, it, and they, it was lightning in a bottle with those two mm. for a mm. few months. Mm. Mick, I know this is going to sound a little corny. I don't know if anybody's told you yet. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're at TNA. I'm glad you're at Bound for Glory. I know you haven't been here very long, but I'm excited about you being here. AJ visits now Foley's office. Uh He says, I like you, but not most of the lads from the other company have come in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like another WWE reference as well. That's just a (laughs) shoot. In walks Team 3D. Mick gives Brother Ray shit for rocking the red flannel, which is signature Foley. Splicey hears him at WrestleMania 22. Mm. Is, yeah, that, is that the one with Edge? Yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. I love that they skip over WWF for their history. They would have wrestled when Mick tagged as the Rock and Sock Connection. Raw, December 13, 1999. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. yeah you, pretty you can specific. get that. Yeah. 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 And instead, mention ECW. Check out this fan cam from Jim Thorpe, Philadelphia. January 26, 1996. I even knew that date. Wow. Yeah. Is, it, is this from OSC's vault? This is the vault of wrestling. It's three rooms long, four rooms wide. Mm. This is just one tape in it. <laughs> <laughs> this Jim Thorpe fella. <laughs> <laughs> Made out like a king. <laughs> That's crazy, crazy stuff. When everyone else laughed at you, who believed in you, Mikey? Me. Hello, Cactus. Good to see you again, old buddy. And yes... I do look better in this red flannel than you ever did. I did like how he called him Cactus, though, I have to say. Mm, yeah, I, I like how familiar they are with each other. It's great. Monsters, apostrophe, ball, tag titles. Champions Beer Money, Robert Roode and James Storm defend against the blueprint Matt Morgan. Team 3D, Brother Ray and Brother Devon versus LAX, Homicide and Hernandez. Brother Devon, I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? Devon. <laughs> Watch the mon- Don't watch the monsters. <laughs> well, it'll sound a lot better coming out of Paul Anka. Brutal. Violent. Vicious. Horrific. Shocking. It is the match known as Monsters Ball. Brutal. Violent. Vicious. Horrific. But enough of TNA's booking. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> it's time for our tag title match. Barry Scott, you did it again. Contested as a monster's ball, which just means hardcore weapons match, no DQ. Which just means uh, <laughs> there are many monsters and it is their ball. <laughs> they this do ball it once a year. To the know? monsters. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is correct. They get yeah. catering. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah the debutants. Yeah. <laughs> They're coming out this spring. <laughs> they, they get uh, put it back in. He's They're not, not done, done yet. yet. <laughs> WCW's Mongo McMichael to special referee. 
That's so weird. They just announced him in a completely throwaway 30 second video promo on the go home impact. Yeah, obviously he's here because he's we're in Chicago and he's Chicago Bears all pro. And he's just like, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm here physically. (laughs) I've already gotten paid. (laughs) You're lucky I came out. I think even today or Don West says, uh, look at that Mongo there. He's just hanging back, letting it all play out. Yeah, but that's because he doesn't want to work. (laughs) (laughs) He should be getting involved in some way. That's why you give the workers half their pay up front and half after the show. so So you give them the bread and the mayo before the show and but he gets no meat yeah no or, ham or, or cheese <laughs> <laughs> that's right <after> yeah. the <laughs> beer money with Miss Jackie James Storm to see what he was wearing um, like a fun like beer helmet which is really big in the 90s the old foam dome so good oh the beer money both of their careers best run you tell me beer money better than America's Most Wanted yeah. 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 yeah Definitely. Yeah. You were big America's Most Wanted fans. A big James don't, Storm don't, fan. Don't, okay. don't push Chris Harris on me. <laughs> you you push the Storm on guy. Me. You're the Harris <laughs> guy. Ah, <bollocks>. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of us is getting the best of Braden Walker DVD. <laughs> Abyss, Chris Park, he's a producer in WWE now. Even sneaked on camera with fellow TNA alum AJ Styles. Yeah, he had the segment on SmackDown. When was it like 2020? Yeah, um, very good. Yeah. He was really good. He was like, and they like put the kibosh on it after it, it was either one week or two weeks. And people were sad because they were like, it's Abyss and he's good. Mm. Uh, yeah, he was his statistician who was berated after AJ lost the IC belt. This is bullcrap. And you have this will never happen. You gotta keep burning this. I think you good, buddy. Tagging with. Oh, sees boy, Matt Morgan. The blueprint, lads. Outstanding. He's got the look. He's got the size. He's got the ability. Maybe lacking in the promo skills, but he was getting better. I don't know why. Everyone dropped the ball with this guy. You, you don't know either. I can tell by the way you look at me. That must be it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like he had great matches with Kurt Angle. Yes, um, he, did. he did. Yeah. Well, we might find out on Impact. Um, team 3D. Steve, well, how does the Team 3D song go? Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> <laughs> Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah. See, the WWE song that they had was Get up, get up, get up, drop the, the bombshell. Bomb and the TNA one goes Get down, get down, get down, <laughs> there is a bombshell. <laughs> We're coming now. Get up, get up, get up, drop the bombshell. Put down, put down, put down. Put down, put down, put down. Yes, Babyface LAX, Homicide, Ana Hernandez rounding everyone out. Everyone goes straight for beer money. Great spot. 5150, Homicide with a Tope turn Hilo. And you get your hand up. Yeah. It is Tope turn Hilo. And he just nails it. Absolutely nails it. Yes. And Don West doesn't miss a beat. He doesn't even put a comma in a sentence when he's giving him the high five. It was great. Mm. Super mix with a big taker dive over the top rope. I have the exact same thing written down. Big taker dive. Whereas, uh, was a Sim snooker? Uh, with <laughs> Deuce or Domino? Which was he again? Deuce, right? You think he was Deuce? <laughs> Drop the Deuce. <laughs> Kearney fork to Devon, Devon. But you can see Homicide's holding the fork blunt side. They get in real close. It was done really well, but maybe don't get in that close and kind of ruin the magic. Mm. Mm. Shock treatment for your troubles. Uh, Zero signal. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. It was so good. I stole it. I love that move. It's a cool move. Did you? you, I thought you came up with that yourself. No, you stole it. Oh, no. I stole it from Abyss. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I think I added a torture rack in there as yeah, well yeah, beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, there you yeah. go. Yeah. So Lex and Abyss, there you go. Cheese grater nut shot. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Grind that cheese grater on my mask. 
Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still draws blood somehow. S- scratch that itch, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Smack Hernandez with a cookie sheet, and that gets an ECW chance. See the way Hernandez oh, went up to the top? Oh, my God. And for it, Ray up top. Say, wow. Beer Money with a blindside ghetto blaster and both blockbuster. Slow count by Mongo? Hmm. Oh, it's equally slow for Matt Morgan. So, okay, he just does slow counts. <laughs> that's his thing. That's yeah, his gimmick. That, that's his, that's yeah, that's his... He's got... I've got something that you, you <laughs> won't something. see it coming. Don West... Like, so later on in the match, I think, like, Homicide gets really pissed off with the count. And Don West just quick as anything he's doing the same count for everyone so you're just gonna have to put them out <laughs> oh I'm wow like, you you're so good <laughs> mm. strap on the beer football helmet challenge mongo to a face off i love this three point stance and mcmichael passes storm and clotheslines rude big cheer crowd love it there they go he goes right through the one and just takes the other one out just like he did fan of this you know, i guess it's weird, like, you know, like, Mongo was not moving quick, hmm. except for, for this one spot where it was, like, for just 0.7 of a second, he turned back the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, this big dude, like, you can see how he would have been a good, a really good athlete back in the day. Mm. Hmm. Blueprint, big body block and knock all the pins down on the outside. There's not enough bins in this boat so <laughs> Bully Ray fixes that was it a hot bin Jay <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brother Divine freshly showered and now in street clothes provides the big spot of the boat we got a table and lighter fluid crowd roar in approval dousing the table man how much lighter fluid did they oh it's, my god it's like the Simpsons you know when it went like <laughs> light in the barbecue <laughs> just bottles of it yeah. unbelievable I actually was expecting a mushroom cloud after he lit the <laughs> yeah. table on fire the cloud was the fire extinguisher guy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> huge flaming table spot Johnny Devine now sent it across and they take him and just throw him through the flaming table and a bitch is on fire this is Abyss's one and only flaming table spot. So Good. It's, it's like repeated throughout history. He had minor burns, but he was yeah. not. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. This is horrendous. Like, take the fire away from this. He gets, was it Chokeslammed? Yeah. No, uh, is it? I Which? think it's power bombed okay. through. Uh, from down. the stage to the concrete floor. Yeah. Because, I mean, the tables can only do so. It's going to break your fall somewhat, but. Oh, my God. Whack your head. Mm. Uh, there was an episode of Rampage there, I want to say about kind of middle of January. It was a women's street fight. So it was like Ty Conti and Anna Jay versus Ruby Soho and Willow. Willow! Willow, <laughs> <laughs> Willow took Anna Jay, okay? Lift her up for a powerbomb, right? And you know that when you're holding someone up for a powerbomb, you're blind. You can see. Mm. And she jumped too far out. She landed arse first on the table and shoot power bombed Anna J onto the concrete. Oh, oh God, God, no. It was fucking horrific. Oh, God. It was disgusting. It was terrifying. No! No! Oh, jeez. Oh, Let's have a little bit of forethought, you know? Let's put down two tables, lads. Yeah, you yeah know? why not? Lads, let's just take it home. Hernandez sets up a table. Oh, a, a new feud tonight. Hernandez versus the uh, bag of tax. Oh my god. Time must have stood still for that poor dude. Yeah. yeah. I thought he did well to say, Mongo, do it. I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> I I'm, failed. Yeah. <laughs> Please help me. <laughs> and, and to be fair, in terms of kayfabe, why the fuck was the referee emptying a bag of tax on the table? <laughs> Didn't even think. Please, please help me, sir. <laughs> uh, the bag's tied too tight, Billy. <laughs> uh, we get a look at attacks on the table. Hey, they're not all the gold kind. Like, they, they couldn't find all brass ones, so yeah. they get the multicolored ones. Oh, the ones with little plastic tops with on them? With the white and the blue. Yeah, and the yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> He who sets it up must go through it. Hernandez goes through the table, but Hyena's beer money, Storm, spit the beer in Devon's face. Berate Mongo to count the pin. One, two, three. Beer money retain in 20 minutes, 20 seconds. Beer money steals the match. Here 
This was way better than I was expecting. You know, it started off silly, garbagey spots. You know, like the thing with the fork in the forehead. I hate that shit. It's so unnecessary. I don't enjoy somebody getting a fork scratched across their forehead. But it got better. I got more into it. I thought, yes, the table spot was incredible to see. I'm just glad that Abyss wasn't permanently injured. But if you look at who's in this match... Beer Money, Abyss, Matt Morgan, Team 3D, LAX. How can it not be good? And I really enjoyed it. And I'm not a huge fan of hardcore matches in general. So, uh, yeah, well done. I very much echo your sentiments. Like, I'm not a big fan of plunder matches, but I thought this was awesome. I got completely sucked in and I loved it. I have written here a 20-minute thrill ride with zero breaks, just non-stop. Something was happening in every moment of this match and I was there for all of it. I think Team 3D are the greatest brawling tag team there's ever been. Like, they're not the if best can, wrestlers. If they can face the greatest walking tag team. <laughs> <laughs> Someone book it. Please. Maybe Jim Duggan and Hercules. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so far, I, I was like, this was my favourite thing on this show by miles, and I wasn't sure if anything was going to come close to it. It was that good. Hmm. Uh, yeah, v- very much the same thoughts. It was a blunder match, but it was great, and they did lots of stuff, and everything they did worked, except for the baggy that no sold. <laughs> 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 But like even the stuff with Mongo McMichael, the three point stance thing, that was great. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, um, McMichael's role actually changed the day of the show. He was supposed to be the special enforcer on the outside, but Jared said we can't have two special enforcers yeah. on the same pay per view, so we're changing you to the special guest referee. Oh, good man! And the wrestlers were all pissed because he counted too slow and was out of place for multiple spots. But like it's an eight man buster clock. It's chaos. Place. Yeah, yeah, a bit of leeway, lads. Yeah. Um, just want to mention, like, uh, Mongo McMichael, he's in a real bad way at the moment in hospital. Rick visited him, actually, uh, Jan 2023. I'll put it up on the screen. He has ALS, the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is a rare brain and spinal cord disease affecting motor neurons, like voluntary movement, like his ability to chew, walk, talk. Various fundraisers for him and ALS, like 2021's Team Mongo, raised over 200,000. Uh, what's really sad, though, like, being a famous footballer, and wrestler personality means nothing when your medical bills are like tens of thousands every month. Like this superstar, you know, can't pay his bills and fucking what do the rest of us have? Um, anyway, I will link any current fundraisers for Mongo I see in the description. Arn Anderson, unlock that barn door and let these stallions out to feel that wind in their face, baby. Let us run against the wind. I just want to uh, bring up um, the TNA tag division at this point was fantastic. And like, AW nowadays has, has done wonders for tag wrestling. I really think it's kind of brought it back to the kind of tippy top of professional wrestling because, you know, Vince hated it and he kind of got fucking down there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like Team 3D, then there was a time where like Kaz and Eric Young, LAX, Beer Money, Motor City Machine Guns, uh, Lethal and Dot, then Lethal Consequences, The Main Event Mafia, AJ and Daniels, America's Most Wanted, Ink Ink. Ink, ink. Attitude, attitude. <laughs> Dilly gaff. You know, you know, when you go a bit further back, you had the Naturals and Team Canada, Triple X, and then you go a bit forward in time, X, man, and then yeah. you have the World uh, Elite. So, like, I, I really did think in a time when tag wrestling was almost dead in the US, TNA kind of planted their flag and they brought it back, and uh, fair foxius. I loved it. All right, that's a pretty high point and a halfway point of the show. Let's take it to the hot work. Hello there, Noggers. Carl Bamage and Joe Neal here from It's Not Cage Fighting for the most eagerly anticipated MMA pro wrestling crossover since Tito Ortiz joined Aces and Aids. We are super honored to give you this week's ad break questionarium. So, without further ado, which Vince McMahon project had a famous UFC fight with Randy Couture? Answer after the break. Any more muscle? I don't think I'm ever gonna gain more muscle. 
shake up your muscle building routine like I do with Cell Tech and Nitro Tech. It's the fuel you need to help build muscle. Stack the odds in your favor with Cell Tech and Nitro Tech, America's number one selling muscle building stack at GNC and health food stores everywhere. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you which Vince McMahon project had a famous UFC fight with Randy Couture. If you said Brock Lesnar, you're wrong. The correct answer was Tony Holm, aka Ludwig Borger. Yep, the Vikingi from Helsinki took on Couture back at UFC 13, getting submitted in 56 seconds and never competed in MMA again. Still a better MMA career than CM Punk though. That's true, yeah. Yep. And if you would like to know more about Punk's MMA career, as well as many of the other quirky stories that happen in the world of MMA, you can do so at youtube.com forward slash it's not cage fighting. And for previews, post fight reactions and interviews, you can follow us on our sister channel at INC Live. And now back to our feature presentation. The veterans. See like we should be on the same page. We are from the same school. Three-way war, a gimmick name for a standard triple threat. AJ Styles versus Booker T versus Christian Cage. We are from the same school. <laughs> Booker T, why are you talking like that? They say the lion is the king of the jungle. You see, but I say the elephant is the true, true king of the jungle. Back in my country. <laughs> <laughs> People think... That the tiger is the king. But Booker T think the elephant is the king. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hilarious. I love this gimmick. It's total bollocks. You can't push him to the top, but they did. He must have had so much fun. He clearly went to the cinema <laughs> back in 2006 and watched Forrest Whitaker in The Last King of Scotland and go... One day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, the Last King of Scotland's about a Ugandan dictatorship through the eyes of a Scottish doctor, fictional, with Force Whitaker and James McAvoy. Have, have, you, have you ever seen the movie? Yeah. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's good, yeah. I am the father of this nation, Nicholas. And you have most grossly offended your father. Brilliant, because this only gets better. Mm. It oh, only oh, gets oh, better. Yeah. Christian! Christian Cage! He's on a second theme here. We're at the tail end of his run. He debuted almost three years ago at Genesis 2005. He was ready to go to WWE. ECW came knocking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Captain Jack. <laughs> to be fair, they had banger matches. Yes, Fucking fabulous. Jay, would I be correct in thinking that this Christian being undecided on whether he wants to join with the veterans or with the young guys is mirroring his real life feelings on whether to sign with WWE or TNA, and they're just making a sort of a reference to it. Mm, yeah, yeah, very clever. Yeah. Okay. You're giving them a lot of credit. <laughs> <laughs> G Styles, real happy about this. So if you've only seen him in WWE, here's him from 2008 kicking off. Holy God. And by the way, you missed one really what? critical contributor to this match, Jay. Go on. Who's the referee? Oh, don't you worry about him. <laughs> well, you should be because he didn't have a job. For very long. <laughs> Steve, we are in the Shane Sewell era I of TNA. Notice. I did want to bring it up later on because in the build to the X Division Championship match for three out of the four weeks, Sheikh Abdul Bashir had matches every week, cut his, you know, anti-USA promo win. And then Shane Sewell was always refing his matches. He would push Sewell and like Sewell would, you know, do the... Oh, yeah. I'm getting angry. <laughs> you don't make me want to angry. <laughs> and so they're clearly building up to him. Uh, blowing his stack <laughs> and firing up on the big dirty terrorist and you yep. and you alone are going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> this man has DNA. I think he can handle it. Ding, ding, ding. Ooh, heels join forces. Booker embraces Christian. Christian grabs his hair, inverted neck breaker. Hilarious. Immediate swear about him. AJ breaks it up. A great way to establish it's every man for himself. Lads know each other so well. Whole train to the corner, 
Buck him over the top. Block and AJ punch. Goes for a springboard phenomenal forearm. Cut off immediately. Oh my god, that bump. My heart skipped multiple beats looking at that. But it's AJ Styles and he's like the best. And unbreakable. (laughs) Phenomenal forearm to Booker. No, AJ blind moonsault to the outside instead. Mrs. Cage. (laughs) Meaning he's out for a bit. It's Booker and Christian. Outside crescent kick and pin. And I was like, ooh, referee Shane Sewell. (laughs) 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 What's the old saying? Let your boys run wild and free. (laughs) (laughs) Boys run wild and free. (laughs) Oh, Christian off the ropes. Ducks under Booker. Booker takes a bump. And then Christian runs to the rope and then looks at him. I was like, oh, you guys just botched that spot. That was the next spot. So they just, you know, dubby dub it. And they just move close to each other. And now we're back. <laughs> Cage ducks and AJ finally hits that phenomenal forearm. Backflip back over Christian, who sends Booker to the outside, ending with a beautiful backflip dropkick by Styles. And the crowd applaud in approval. I thought that spot was fabulous. They did it to perfection. AJ always does. That's why, you know, the whip and then the drop down close up quick as anything leapfrog and then drop kick and as he did the leapfrog christian went under him and knocked booker t over that, that was incredible professional wrestling mm. backflip up breath rope into a headlock and bam follows up with a juji katami flying armbar spinneroony christian puts a stomp to it to do his own spinneroony uh, aj uses him as a launch pad just jumps off I I think this was my favourite spot of the match because he was so fast out of fucking nowhere. And like Christian's like, what? Off his knee? Yeah. It was so good. And it's here I realise, oh man, I really like listening to the commentators, which for me, like post attitude era is quite rare. (laughs) Don West, Mike Tanay, they like each other and they love the product. They believe in it and want you to enjoy it and get you on board. And you can really feel it. Yeah. Holy shit. And he's got Christian Cage down on the mat. Could this be the spiral tap? Up top? Spiral tap, but he missed his own. He lands dead on the leg. Spear by Christian. Booker sequesters referee Sewell by his jersey. Just long enough for AJ to recover and kick out. Clever. Finish of the match. Top rope unprettier. AJ, you're done, mate. But top rope axe kick. You're done, Christian. One, two, three, and Booker T wins. Oh, the axe kick by Booker T off the ropes. And Booker now's got a chance to cover one, one two, two yes! 13 minutes, what do you think? Uh, match of the night, amazing, loved it. On paper, you look at these three and you're thinking, three of the best ever? This is going to be good. But, you know, you're worried it's a triple threat match. Are they going to all pull it together? And they did. Held together by AJ, but beautifully complimented by Christian and Booker. At this point in time, this era of AJ Styles in my opinion, the best pure wrestler of all time. He doesn't quite have the mic skills, so I wouldn't put him on the level of HBK and Angle. Having exciting matches, but not just exciting matches like, you know, flippy shit, you know, high spots, but it's all tied together in a nice way. The matches flow very well. It's not just going from spot to spot. He's just an absolute joy to watch. Yeah, amazing. Loved every second of this match. I can't speak highly enough. Yeah, I think he said it all there, Steve. Yeah, agreed. No, I'm definitely not as high on this match as you guys. I thought it was very good. I didn't think it was great. They were put in a difficult spot following that tag match, which I did think was incredible. AJ was out of this world. I think you're right about AJ. At this time, there's not many wrestlers who were as incredible as him. But for like me, holding this match together, it wasn't AJ. It was Shane Sewell. (laughs) <laughs> Christian because I think he's really clever at timing and when to do things I didn't like Booker T and TNA lads I think he was way past his prime I don't think he could keep up with the top guys or with the best guys and in a way I think he kind of phoned it in a bit I do think he got by because of his like hilarious character work and that definitely kept him up there I'd much rather watch AJ versus Christian Cage uh, as a match. But I'm saying that like this, this match was still really fucking good. I just didn't think it was quite as good as you guys thought. Hmm. Great bout. Not their best, but them not at their best is still great. 
So holy, that just speaks to the in-ring quality of TNA. Anyway, yeah. thumbs up, but for these lads, it's like just another Sunday. No, just another day for <laughs> styles, you know. Is it was your match of the night, Jay? Uh, it's event? tough. I enjoyed a lot of matches on this. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to. Show. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's like it is they really are, and the, show, it's a yeah. great variety of yes. shows, uh, wrestling matches yeah, types, yeah. you know. Booker T gets the W. Up next, it bound for glory. Jeff Jarrett, one on one against Kurt Angle. <laughs> one of your two main events aka no main events <laughs> <laughs> it's kurt angle versus jeff jarrett with special enforcer mick foley oh steve do you have anything on the build the old jill the builder i do so <laughs> i'm sorry i'm still amazed that you an obscure belgian footballer from the 90s congratulations sir <laughs> Gilles de Bilde. Okay, so the build. Jeff Jarrett left TNA two years ago and finally returned in September, helping Samoa Joe defeat Kurt Angle at No Surrender. Two years? Yeah. Wow. He was working backstage, I, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, doing the VP. Yeah. But, but like, as a wrestler, yeah, he, like he took some time off. He was dealing with lo- loads of stuff. You know, his uh, wife was sick and mm. raises girls and things like that. His wife died of breast cancer. Mm. It was in 2007 anyway. Yeah. Really, really tough time for Jared. He did show up like just sporadically, like, oh, yeah. you need a hand for like team angle at lockdown or I'll put over Robert Roode at sacrifice. But otherwise, he's away again, you know? Yeah. What? A guitar! Never drew a dime. Knockout blow from Samoa Joe leads to the three count! Samoa Joe, he, he, you know, he'd hint at the return by he started using the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weapon to win his matches. <laughs> yeah. Oh my Samoa god. Samoa Joe. Oh man. Jelvis Presley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if he, he was right about the lack of respect. <laughs> Holy god. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he, he made his. He's a shark boy. <laughs> <laughs> so then Jared made his official TNA return on the impact after no surrender cut a very heartfelt promo he talked about some of the older veterans who need to respect some of the younger guys that have carried TNA in his absence like AJ and Joe so then Kurt comes out pissed off saying that he carried TNA me and only me carried TNA for two years and then he challenged Jeff to match and Jeff said no and walked off. Kurt Angle spent the next few weeks trying to goad Jarrett. Little things like bringing up his family. Hey, Jeff, I want you to go back home. Tell those three little girls, daddy's a quitter. And you can see him just breaking Jeff a little bit week after week. Then Jeff Jarrett mentioned that Kurt has been a wreck. (laughs) They are shooting here, lads. He said that he's lost his belt. He lost his medals, and he lost his wife. And then Kurt fires back, I'm not the only one who lost a wife. I was like, holy shit, mate. It's at that point where Jeff finally breaks, and he says, yeah, okay, match is happening. Sunday, bound for glory. It's absolutely happening. Well, Jeff, I'm not the only one to lose their wife. So then there was other bollocks that, you know, like it wasn't great, like Jeff comes out and he cuts a promo I heard you were shooting Kurt you did a promo in the sun the sun in the UK this bastion of journalistic (laughs) integrity with the tits on page three (laughs) I I was like Jeff Jeff, hang on let me see the newspaper show it to me there is no write up is there (laughs) there actually was it was in the Daily Star it was in the Star Yeah, they said the sun Ah, but the Star is a little bit more classy though I'm reliably informed that it is below the sun and above the Sunday sport in, yeah. terms, of, yeah. in terms of trash bags. Which is just it, isn't it? Because yeah. I actually looked up the article. I don't know why Jarrett's so upset. It, in it, Angle says, my contract's coming up and I like being in TNA and I'll most likely resign with TNA. Yeah, but it's because, holy shit, we're in the newspaper. We yeah. better yeah. make something up. And I don't think yeah. anyone will actually look it up. Yeah, exactly. And Kurt, it bound for glory. I'm going to beat your ass. So bad, even Papa Vince won't take you back. 
Mm. So Jarrett just said when Angle signed with TNA two years ago, he thanked Jarrett for freeing him from a living hell. And Jarrett's big line to finish is, I'm going to beat you up so bad, even Papa Vince won't take you back. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and so this got so heated, Jarrett accepted the match and added special enforcer Mick Foley to the bait. Kurt Angle, eyes down, entranced, hood up. I love his black hoodie. It's a great look, I think. Uh, exudes his mindset like he's a heel, alone, isolated, consumed, the black shredded darkness, but he's still like America, USA on the inside. Which is, uh, uh, uh. Kicks off with Thank You Jeff Chance. It's his first match on TV for a year and a half. No ref shirt for Foley. He's just wearing a chamois. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably can't trust him to give it back after it. <laughs> <laughs> Matt wrestling to kick off. Angle with headlocks and buries his face into Jeff's lovely blonde locks. And here, let's work out the next few spots. Angle barking his spots throughout this entire match. Mm. I love Angle's style, like the progression of his matches. So it starts off with Matt wrestling. And as we get further on, you'll he'll introduce kicks and strikes. So it goes kind of from amateur Matt wrestling to pro wrestling. And by the end, you're down and dirty. You might see chairs flying. So, you know, I think it's a great progression. Austin leg splat when he's draped over Brett's rope. You know, they're hey there. And then mm-hmm. Jared does the old Jackie Fargo strut. But Angle has none of it. I'm just kapow. Angle's gimmick here is similar to how he left ECW, WWE, CW, as the wrestling machine, like no-nonsense heel, that's all business, incredible math technician. I will dismantle you. He's quite ferocious, and like with the bald head as well. He looks proper terrifying. He was vicious. He like He's so fast. Yeah. Every, everything he does has a slickness to it. You know the way you were saying that AJ, for, for like you, was the best wrestler in the world? When I watched Kurt Angle in TNA, there was no one touching him for these big main event epic matches. I, I just thought he was exceptional. Mm. Yeah, quite menacing. I was thinking like Bret Hart, amazing math technician, but he didn't have like unnerving intensity. You were never afraid of Bret Hart. Jeff catches him out with a schoolboy, but Kurt kicks out, gets to his feet first, and flattens Jeff with a clothesline. Suplex in the middle of the ring. Pin attempt? No. Just kind of grinds the forearm into the chest and tries again. Fine. And cinches in a headlock. Angle isn't giving him an inch. Uh, I just thought, like, watching this, it was like Kurt and Jeff, and Jeff's working Kurt's pace. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I actually have it written here, like, holy shit, these guys are working, and Jeff is keeping up. Straddling the top turnbuckle, Angle's like, here, let me German suplex you (laughs) to the outside. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, no, Kurt. (laughs) And Jared is able to reverse with a top rope superplex. Woo! Figure four leg lock is applied for a full minute before Kurt reaches the ropes and breaks the hold and Kurt seizes back control. I I love this where Kurt had the rope break. And Jeff kept the hold on and Kurt was like, get him off me, get him off. You know, he's selling the moves. Great. Throw to the ropes? No, get back here for a German suplex. Love that. A second. A third. Straps down. Aloha, Kurt. Absolutely not. And reverses into an ankle lock. Ropes? No. Knee down and twist. But Jarrett, last ditch, rolls forward and bucks off angle. And survives a follow-up angle slam. That was like shit. That's the ankle lock and the angle slam. That's kind of everything, Kurt. What else have you got? Beautiful moonsault. Oh my God, I have it written here. Does anyone have a nicer moonsault no. than Kurt Angle? May- Lita, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't neck her. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Does he land with his arms down by his side or is it just me? I think he might. It's the reversed battered sausage. <laughs> Uh, I was just like, did he ever hit this moonsault? Because his most famous one on Raw uh, against the Crippler, he did the big one off the cage. cage. Yeah, which he also did in Tina against Mr. Anderson. And he hit and he hit that one. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another one where Anderson is on a ladder and then he does the big moonsault and he hits that one. He did break Spark Plug's arm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Very good. Mm. Um and just Lockdown Jarrett and Angle, they had their lockdown match, and he does the spot and he hits him as well. It's yes. gorgeous, fantastic, yes. beautiful like, arc. His on form it. is just yeah. beautiful to look at, yeah. Mm. And there he goes, just in time, just went the right direction. Jarrett considers hulking up, 
but that's not a thing. <laughs> He's like, just strumming up. <laughs> but let's KO Rudy instead. So he ducks an angle, wallops him. Stroke! Foley in, earning his paycheck. But it's a two! Finish out the match. How dare you call this match fairly? Angle wallops Mick Foley with a chair. Get back in the ring! Oh, oh my God! God! He just crushed Mick Foley! He cracks him across that head. Oh my fucking goodness. It's the second time that that happened on this show. Someone clatters James Storm and then they try to like pull him up. And you can see, like, he just physically can't get up. And I think it's, like, Hernandez has to, like, physically drag him over to the ring. Ooh. So, yeah. Please, please, less of the sideways just to the side of the head, Don't please. do any head chair shots because either it's going to be like that, which is not nice to see, or it's going to be like when The Undertaker and Kane takes a chair shot. And <laughs> hand out here. Go, go, gadget hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so either don't do it or have like a shitty chair. Like the material yeah. is that of the cookie sheet. Yeah. And Angle swings for the fences for Jarrett. This one's more of a swipe. I'd rather take that one if I had to choose between both. Mick pulls the ref out, not letting Angle's BS stand. Socko! Guitar shot. Never drew a dime. And the three. Jeff Jarrett wins it. Very different to anything we've seen on the show so far. So come back to your point about variety. Obviously, it's a technical match and it was very good, but their match at lockdown was better. I remember that more fondly. Here, I'll splice it in while you're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early on in the match, you know, I probably struggled a bit. I was thinking, yeah, it's fine, but I've kind of seen all this before. But then it got more exciting, especially once the figure four was on. I think excitement really ramped up from there. Just point, I love how people sell the guitar shots. You know, it's like, boop, they're, they just go rigid and fall Stiffed. over. Or like, I don't care if he ever drew a dime or not with that, <laughs> that guitar shot. It looks amazing. Again, I'm going to say it was the wrong winner. I don't see why Jarrett won this match. I think there was definitely room for Angle winning and this feud heating up to the next match. But... Yes, I very much liked it, but uh, the the previous two matches I preferred. I think I'd be more like you on the previous match. I loved this match. This is like everything that I want in my, my wrestling. It was super over, really heated. The fans were rabid. Two really good, technical, solid workers telling an actual story. Jeff keeping up with Kurt Early and then as the match went on when like Jeff took over it kind of turned more into a knockdown kind of brawl punches there was one spot about halfway through the match where they didn't even do any wrestling moves and they just stood in the middle of the ring and they traded punches and I was like these guys are the two best punchers in professional wrestling like no one touches them nowadays at all like Jeff is famously to it kind of yeah but the finish left a bad taste in my mouth. This is the side of TNA that when people think of the negativity, this is what causes it. I um, enjoyed this whole match very much. 20 minutes of Kurt Angle still in his prime here, going on electric, intense, scary <laughs> phase of his, uh, with his gimmick. The meat of the match was amazing. It's just the final 90 seconds. Jekyll and Hyde, which is... 18 and a half minutes was a straight wrestling match, then turned into crazy bollocks, chair shot, chair shot, soccer, guitar shot, finish, the last 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, what is this? TNA in a nutshell. Yeah. So that's what they're offering. You know. I do have it written here. I just want a special mention to the commentary. I thought they were incredible in this match, especially Iron Mike Tanay at the very end when he's going, yeah! Yeah, and Janosha, Janiqua, Jamiroquai, <laughs> back at home. Daddy did this for you. And I was like, that's Jamiroquai. <laughs> that's a fucking great call, Mike. I don't know what is going I know that they're all Jays, right? Yeah, yeah, even the wife, Jill. So yeah, yeah. They all have the same. They got a discount on the monograms, <laughs> the bath ropes. You see? Count one! Count two! The big question going out of this is how did the Daily Star follow up on all of this? <laughs> Their scoop. <laughs> like, 
It's written like a paid advertisement yeah, yeah, yeah. on your harness, which is reciting the great Papa Vince won't want you back line. But how could it be an ad? Maybe the readers would want to know you can watch the full rant on Impact tonight at 9 p.m. on Bravo. <laughs> Bound for Glory will air on the channel Wednesday, 15th October. <laughs> Because seven matches down, one match left. Because it's time for your main event. On TNA's biggest stage, they will fight for respect. The single most important thing that separates the men from the boys is respect. It's time for your main event. The world title match. The Icon Sting competes against champion Samoa Joe. TNA puts the lads over strong. Three hype videos. The feud and each wrestler individually. Sting's beef is the perceived lack of respect. He paved the way for these guys. Back. Thank you. <laughs> but the roster is filled with a bunch of spoiled, rotten brats. Joe isn't having it, saying respect. 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 <laughs> he respects respect. Respect. what Sting was, but I'll knock you off your pedestal and make sure you don't get back up. Sorry, do you have anything in the build-up here? I I think you pretty much got it like there's one episode of Impact where Sting comes out and he's like doing the really I'm a disgruntled vet and I hate the young guys and he breaks out the old back in my day I was working 340 days a year (laughs) for 20 bucks in the gym (laughs) I I would also be disgruntled (laughs) I was like that is the most carny line 340 days a year year i got 25 days off i got a day off every two weeks <laughs> joe i was running up and down the roads 340 days a year wrestling in front of a few hundred in a small gymnasium for 20 bucks joe 50 dollars on a good day joe Ooh, referee is Earl Hebner. He joined TNA in February 2006, uh, seven months after being let go from WWE because... Selling the t-shirts out of his car, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, what a fucking carny. 340 days a year selling t-shirts at gyms for $20 a pop. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was said that he got fired for selling WWE merch out of his car. Like, he got uh, boxes, just brought it outside and sold them. His official line is he got the sack because Johnny Ace didn't like his brother. And the merch that he sold at his shop was the same vendor as WWE's i.e. you're selling very similar merchandise and that was good enough to let them both go okay doesn't make any sense to me no anyway oh the guys are wearing matching black and white can i bassets all sorts here <laughs> <laughs> blackjacks <laughs> panda natural licorice uh, let's ease up on the bars and the oh, okay. the sweets okay. there, Jay. <sighs> Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you have something to say. <laughs> do you? I most certainly do. <laughs> do you want to let the cat out of the bag to the poor fans here? Yeah, please do. Where we uh, kayfabe just bras because we didn't want to give any spoilers. And I put out a sneaky what bar on Sonya Deville from the 2023 Royal Rumble because she was wearing black and white. Everyone said black and white cookie. Never heard. Ooh. Supposedly this That's is like white an cup American cups. thing. Okay. My one. He is a bottle of Sheridan's. <laughs> oh, perfect as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Delicious. Shane Battams. Monokuma ah, from yeah, Dongan yeah. Romper. Donkey Romper. One of my Fantastic. Uh, favorite games on the Vita. Darius Games says Yay. he is Pokemon black and white. Yeah, whack a whack. <laughs> There's Pokemon Silver 2000, I think, as well, with Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> we have uh, Zombie Flanders 42 uh, says Sting is. Give me some of those. A tweet to the past. 
Great name. Racist Roddy Piper. Uh-huh. Listen, he was trying to promote race. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we got two from Chile, lads. Jorge Inzulza and Cristobal Pasten both said he's a Tuyo. What? What? Quite blame? intrigued. Yeah, yeah. I have no clue what it is, but uh, it look, I'm intrigued enough. Yeah, it looks tight. One. And uh, just just to finish out, we have a couple of watch smokes. Ooh. Manchester Black. Manchester yeah. <laughs> Black. Very nice. Classy uh, that's from, white filters as well. That's uh, from Brent May. Irish Green 1994 says Cigarone XL. They look very mm. sexy, actually, mm. don't they? Mm. I, I, they look like e-cigs. Like, yeah. they, like they look like they got like a little yeah. metal tip. Yeah, yeah, the nice. tobacco industry. Yeah. They know what they're doing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Gulliver Gooch says, <laughs> <laughs> great name. It was, yeah. I hope that's his real name. <laughs> 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 He's a Marlborough Black. Very, very nice. nice. Yeah. Very nice. So, yes, yeah, so that is uh, our, our, our uh, sneaky Wapar, second Wapar of the show. Steve, it's back and it's better than ever. It's full force. I'll give it a pass just for Gulliver Gooch. And it's not going <laughs> But I learned that that is a thing that exists. <laughs> oh, I agree, Mike. I mean, think about what's already happened since Sting started on this quest. Ding, ding, ding. Sting kicks off hot, then bails to the outside. Joe suicide dives out after him. No resting, you bollocks. But they Dudley boys it and schmulls into the crowd. Joe and Sting walk up the steps in the bleachers. Oh my god, is this the pay-per-view where Joe... Yeah. He's headed up towards like a luxury box area, and Joe comes running across and Sting and... You gotta be kidding me! He just put his body on the line! He just jumped right over the top and just laid out Sting on the steel steps! He just took a bump onto the concrete steps. Oh my and, god. And, and not only that, he balls them. He nearly, nearly balls himself. If he had, he wouldn't have gotten up. So clearly, he just missed his balls on the railing. This is both the most memorable spot he's ever had in his career and the absolute stupidest spot I've ever seen. What were you thinking, mate? A sprint from the luxury box, diving yeah. and landing back first onto the concrete steps. This had to have been a career shortening thing. Although him and Sting are both in AEW in 2023, so maybe not. Oh, okay. So I'll give you a bit of shka. So the rumor was that he broke his tailbone over it and that this spot made him reevaluate his wrestling style and he was never the same since. Joe remained tight-lipped about it, let the rumors run wild and never corrected people if they told him what they knew. But in 2021, Joe finally set the record straight. He was fine. Oh, great. He recounted that it was supposed to be a flying forearm, but Sting moved down much further than anticipated, so he just made the adjustment midair. Wow. (gasps) But regardless of if he was okay, insane bump on a concrete, uneven surface. Oh my God. Sharp steps. He gave up his body because look where he lands. My God, he lands right on the concrete step. Sting was on the other side of the rail on the step. You know, the famous, the most famous spot of all time. Uh, Mick oh, going off Joe's the... bump. His <laughs> 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 other bump. <laughs> <laughs> the Booker one? Yeah, yeah. So when we say Samoa Joe bump, you know, lurch forward, Booker T does a scissors kick, and like, you know, he's very close to the ground, so you can either go 90 degrees and go down, or 207 degrees, defy physics, and take a back bump. <laughs> Sheikh Abdul Bashir's gone, <laughs> how can I jump to meet the scissors kick? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, derailed that. Um, the most famous bump of all time is Foley coming off the Hell in a Cell. Yeah. But he had something to aim for. He's like, if I land just right on that table, it'll break my fall. And he was right. He was fine after that. It was the one through the top of the cell that mm. killed him. Like, that was absolutely fine. The bump he took, it, it went off without a hitch, right? Joe, this was nothing like that. It was, there is no way you can't get hurt doing this. You know, I understand, you know, don't do it for 30,000 buys. Don't do it for a million buys. Because this could have ended his career on the spot. He could have been stretched out and that was the last you could have seen him. Mm. It was amazing. And I just, I think he did it because almost I have a point to prove. They're taking the belt off me tonight. Fuck you. Look what you're missing. Fucking hell, Uh, lads. 
when the adrenaline wears off, he'll yeah. feel that one. Difficult to watch. He straddles the railing and does his uh, shaka bra to the crowd. And then there's a guy beside him in the green get up and he's like, eh, eh. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Joe with a mule kick, power bomb, kick out? No, STF. Then cross face, then wrench the free elbow. Nice. I was like, cross face. Do you remember after Crippler died? I, I literally have this written so, down. Uh, you know, 2007, the end of June, worst time in wrestling. Oh my God. But uh, straight afterwards, there was like a vacuum. There was like a move has freed up. And a load of different wrestlers started using the crossface. Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Straight yeah. at the top of the yeah. queue, yeah. lads. At least Samoa Joe was doing it beforehand. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Stinger Splash. Joe eats a muscle buster. Beep. No cell. Vicious clothesline. Sting eats a scorpion death drop. Beep. No cell. Joe catches and hits a standing rock bottom. Eh, didn't really catch him. Great with that one. Joe is dominant. Stinger's beaten and can't get up. Hebner starts counting, seeing if Sting can even continue. Joe hot dogs to the crowd, placing his kicks and pia to the face. Wait a minute! Here comes Kevin Nash! He's been a mentor! A mentor of Samoa Joe! You see Earl Hebner telling him what it is! Waka waka waka. <laughs> it's Kevin Nash. It's Nevin Cash. Uh. <laughs> Joe's old mentor. More on this in a minute. Will Sting use the bat? Kevin Nash says no, and keeps the bat brandished over his shoulder. Joe runs to the rope. Nash cracks him in the back. Joe can't believe it. Stinger takes the opportunity and Scorpion death drop and wins the TNA Championship in 17 minutes. Kevin Nash has just used Sting's baseball bat on Samoa Joe. Scorpion! One, two, he's done it! really enjoyed this joe was so fucking up for it and i can understand why he's like sting can't keep up with me and you know sting you know he he's lost a few yards but he had he still had a really good match yeah i uh, love the trading of no selling of each other's finishers that was my highlight of the match that was mine as well as much as i dislike <laughs> getting straight outside the ring and you know i've never mentioned this before wrestlemania 27 <laughs> 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 Triple H and Tiger. No, as much as I hate that, I actually enjoyed this one. I felt it was necessary because it was so heated and so much kayfabe hate between the two of them. And they finished off actually having a good wrestling match. And, you know, the finish. But there you go. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm very similar. Lots of walk and brawl. But I felt that it worked here because of the angle that they were trying to tell and what they were going to build to afterwards as well. Joe worked super hard. Sting kept up as well as he could. Obviously, there's one very memorable spot in it. I would imagine when people think of Bound for Glory 2008, if anyone does. <laughs> 81,000 people do. <laughs> this is the spot that people think of. And I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. But, lads, <laughs> it raised its head again. Like, we had you a... can't be sick of it. We've only started this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not sick of it, but I'm genuinely afraid for what's to come. We had two main events, and they were both WCW-rific finishes. Uh, but still, it was, like, really, really heated. It wasn't the best match on the show by any stretch, but it was good enough and heated enough to be a fitting main event on Bound for Glory. Mm. So Nash turned heel. His last appearance was just before No Surrender last month, parting on good terms, saying he's taught Joe everything he can teach him. In shoot, his just contract ran out, and then they re-signed him really quickly. By the way, Nash was one of the worst things to happen to Joe. Made him look like such a fool. Why does a world champion need a mentor? Yeah. Their partnership was formed by Nash abandoning him at Final Resolution in January, where he convinced Joe, actually, that's a good thing and become my understudy. And the reasoning was, well, I'm richer than you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just a shoot. <laughs> I'm a fraudster, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually, in that segment, he also brandished a bat. So that, uh, and that uh, happened again tonight. So actually, okay. that was quite good. I got an S class. I got a house on the beach. It's paid for. I got money in the bank. I got everything you want. I really like this conflicted good guy thing Sting has got going on. The bubbling frustration at the current locker room. The lack of respect. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry. Big things cooking. <laughs> so let's take it to the aftermath. Just like in 2006 at Mount for Glory. Just like in 2007 on October 12, 2008 at Mount for Glory in Chicago. Sting becomes TNA World Champion thanks to Kevin Nash. This time, making his way to this excited ring, a rolling, unstoppable mountain of pain. Please welcome this brutal, unforgiving force of nature. Welcome to the aftermath. Bound for glory, TNA's WrestleMania. What do you think of that overall? I'm struggling to think of a better TNA pay-per-view. I liked seven out of eight matches. Well, uh, everything you said. The Beautiful People match was oh, yeah, fine, yeah. but there was elements of it I enjoyed. Big, big thumbs up for this pay-per-view in terms of the variety, as you mentioned. High-flying gimmick matches, hardcore tag team, multi-man slash woman, technical brawls. And uh, it all kicked off the main event Mafia storyline, so there's not a lot to complain about, but I was a massive... 2007 to 2011 TNA mark so I, there's maybe an element of rose tinted glasses I don't know but I love this this is your era yes yeah. this is your destiny <laughs> this is the truth come ahead across the land <laughs> by the way I recently listened to that song yeah do you remember how bad that song is? I thought it was good. Yeah, that was great. The yeah. chorus is great. You do you remember like everybody doing what they been doing? Everybody doing their thing. I've been doing what I've been doing. I've been doing my thing. Oh, I love they it. say left and I say right, and I, just oh my god, this is. I, I've listened to that. <laughs> d- d- they've done half of the lyrics and. There you go. The other half writes itself. So he went in there and he said meep. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, highly enjoyable. Lots of explosive wrestling and engaging matchups. Very happy to see so much of the roster in their prime, no less. Hopefully a very easy transition for WWE fans who might not be familiar with TNA, as every match has an ex-WWE guy in it. <laughs> uh, drawbacks, two things. One, not enough backstage bollocks, but that's to be expected on pay-per-view. That's what the weekly show is for. Two, I don't miss the relentless pace of TNA. Holy God, it took them so many years to slow it down, lads. Just, just a little bit. Even when they went to two hours for Impact, it was two one-hour impacts, yes. you know? But very happy to be back in TNA. Can't wait to watch more. I love that multiple feuds quietly hammer home the same theme. It's all about... Respect! Respect! Um, Bring out the respectometer. <laughs> <laughs> How many times was respect said on the show? 25. 26. You disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> 25 and a half. <laughs> 28 times. Wow. Steve. Yeah. I, I actually was going to say 30. Okay. Yes, but, you know, it yeah. doesn't count. Because <laughs> I'm a loser. Yeah, the bulk of which, 17, is from Sting and Joe's portion of the main event. Mm. And two counts of disrespect. Oh. Ah. There you go. Respect. 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 I mean, this business has always been about three things: money, power, and respect. Respect. That's absolutely amazing. But yeah, I love this show oh, overall. A great showing for TNA, and I'd 100% recommend it. Go watch like a company in its prime. I don't think you could watch this and come away having a bad time. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, you should give the TNA guys, you should show them some respect. I, I want more. Th- Where is Booker? Come on, Booker. <laughs> He's coming. He's yeah, coming. Yeah. Oh, you know this promo is happening very soon. Look at this! 
Yeah, you enjoyed that impact? Yeah, like every impact was great back then. Though. The show was really strong. They've got a good company-wide angle, and it doesn't hurt that the wrestling is really good as well. Mm-hmm. And Abdul Bashir. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do his move. He didn't do his special move. On um, impact. Do you know the way... Uh, his Matt- special move? <laughs> <laughs> do you know the way Matt Morgan does the big uh, leg over? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he does a big jump. What if Bashir jumped to meet him? Like, just... <laughs> out of nowhere, like... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> if, if I can retcon history, it would be Royal Rumble 2023. Do you remember when Logan Paul and Ricochet have their big spot where they both jump off the top ropes? I would love to somehow teleport Sheik Bashir in the middle to go... <laughs> 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 oh, <shit. laughs> oh my god, yes. And that does it for TNA Bound for Glory 2008, the first part of our TNA Main Event Mafia story arc. You can see all the episodes we have got lined up for you on the screen. So, oh, how, how do you feel about that? Enjoy that show, sir? Loved it. Can't wait to keep on watching more. Mm-mm. Oh, is he? oh, yeah, you know it. <laughs> 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 Alright, so if you want to keep the old deep fat fryer burning for us and you want to dip some boosts in batter and some double deckers, munchies, you can leave, I don't really like them, and watch them exclusive videos and just help OSW keep trucking along, you can slip us a couple of books at noggeru.oswreview.com. Oh, me, meow, that is right, sir. So, it's a good goodbye from V1. Take a boo. OSE. And the two and a half time golden no award winner J Hunter and remember a winner is you <laughs> <laughs>